Okay, so for today, we're going to be looking at combinations. Ooh, there goes the ice cream truck. Ooh, you want your ice cream in a cone or your ice cream in a bowl? Oh, lazy cow watching the farm report. Okay, so let's pretend there's three flavors of ice cream. Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. And I want two scoops on a cone. They have to be different flavors. And of course, the order matters because whatever flavor is on top, that's the one that I'm going to start eating first. Right? So if I look at those ice cream cones, it's like, hey, right? If chocolate's on top of vanilla, I'm going to have the chocolate first. Right? So these are permutations because the order matters. Right? And as we learned in a previous lesson, if I've got three flavors and I want to pick two of them, we've got three factorial over three minus two factorial. So I've got three factorial over one factorial. And so I've just got, well, six, right? Dividing by one is not going to do anything. So there are six different ways. And sure enough, right, if vanilla is the first scoop, second scoop is either chocolate or strawberry. If chocolate's the first scoop, then I got to do vanilla or strawberry. And then if strawberry is the first scoop, it's going to be vanilla or chocolate. So the order matters and we do a permutation. Ah, but what if I've got the same choice and I want two scoops, but I'm going to put them in a bowl instead of on a cone. Okay, so let's get some bowls out here and let's put some scoops of ice cream in there. Oh, yeah. Of course, the first scoop could have been vanilla, or the first scoop could have been chocolate, or the first scoop could have been strawberry. But as I go through, I'm kind of scratching my head like, well, do I still really have six different things here? All right, because if I'm going to dig in with a spoon, I, I really... I'm thinking there's only three different things here, right? So this is not permutations, this is combinations. Because the order really doesn't matter whether the first scoop is vanilla and the second is chocolate, or the first scoop is chocolate and the second is vanilla. If they're sitting side by side in a bowl, it's the same thing, right? I've got a spoon and I can decide which one to start eating first. So if the order matters, we use a permutation. And that's what we did in the previous lesson. If the order does not matter, instead we're doing combinations. And so this will be the one where we have two different factorials on the denominator. Or I should say just two factorials because sometimes they, they actually match. Right, so if I've got n things and I take r at a time, if I want the combinations, it'll still be n factorial on top, n minus r factorial will still be on the bottom, but it's joined by r factorial on the bottom. So for the ice cream we just did, all right, 3 factorial over 3 minus 2 factorial, times two factorial. All right, so I still have three times two times one as my top. I still have that one on the bottom, but now I also have a two times one on the bottom. Of course, I can do some canceling and reducing. And of course, three over one is just three. So sure enough, there were six different ice cream cones, but only three different bowls, right? At first glance, I might think, well, I got six different bowls. But if I pair up the identical ones and say, no, nah, there's really only three.
Okay, so let's do an example where there are six flavors. And I want two scoops. Order does not matter. All right. Okay, so this is going to be a combination because the order does not matter. So I've got six factorial over six minus two factorial times two factorial. And of course we can do a lot of canceling. All right, I've got a four, three, two, one on top, a four, three, two, one on the bottom. All those factors cancel out. And I could do six times five is 30 and then do 30 divided by two is 15. I like to do it this way though. I like to say, hey, six is two times three, cancel out the twos. I'm left with three times five, which is 15, right? I would not want to make that entire list, nor would I want to try to make pictures, right? I mean, 15, that's kind of a long list to go through. So today you're just going to practice combinations. So let's do a couple examples here. Combination of eight, take five. So I just plug in my number eight, plug in my number five in the appropriate places. Again, at first glance, it looks like a whole lot of work, except we can do a lot of canceling. And on this one, I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to say, hey, three times two times one, that's just six on the bottom. All right, three times two times one is six. Cancel out that six. I'm left with eight times seven, which is 56. Let's try another example. Combination of 10 take two. All right, so 10 factorial. And now 10 minus two is gonna be eight. So on the bottom, I've got eight factorial, two factorial. And again, a whole bunch of canceling. So I'm down to just 10 times nine over two times one. Again, I could multiply and say, hey, I've got 90 divided by two, which is 45. I prefer to go this route. I say, hey, look, 10 is two times five. The twos cancel. Nine times five, of course, is 45. Let's do one more real quick here. Combination, four items taken two at a time. And so this is one of the examples where sometimes we get the exact same factorial repeated on the denominator, right? Like piece of cake, let's uh, cancel some things out. Of course, four divided by two is just gonna leave me with a two. So I really just have two times three on top. Dividing by one won't change anything. So two times three is six. Ooh, we got some burning hot lava here. Bum, bum, bum. Let's go with our burning hot lava. Here's a Photograph of lava spilling into the Pacific Ocean on the big island of Hawaii. And uh, tourists in boats, I guess. Kind of a dangerous thing to do. Not only do you have the waves crashing against the rocks, which is a little bit tricky, but when that hot molten lava pours into the ocean, um, you can get some weird reactions because there's all some trapped gases in that lava. And when it dumps into that ocean, which is very cold compared to the lava, right? The ocean's not that cold to people in Hawaii, but to the lava, it's really cold. Uh, you get some pretty vicious explosions. And so being in a boat that close to lava is not a very smart idea.